These are my handmade traditional shoes. I made them about a year ago and I've done a number of, sort of day hikes in them but I've never ran any real distance in them. So as part of Survival International's Run for Survival charity event, I figured I'd stick them on and run 10 kilometers on a mixture of different terrain and uh, see how they fare. Hi folks, Tom Fan Dabby Josie, thanks for tuning in. So I filmed this run at the end of May and only just getting around to editing it now. Now there's a few reasons why I wanted to make this video. One was obviously to promote the work of this great charity who are fighting for the rights and freedom of indigenous people all around the world. Secondly, I wanted to test out my homemade shoes on a run like this. And lastly, at the start of 2020, I released a video discussing the benefits of minimalist footwear and it generated lots of discussion and interest and I've been meaning to do a follow-up video discussing what I've learned since then. Furthermore, much like how I've used a great kilt to simplify clothing in my past videos, I want to use these traditional shoes to simplify and rethink footwear from a survival perspective. From the modern to the primitive to the modern interpretation of the primitive. Now disclaimer, I'm not a running coach, physiotherapist or sports scientist. All I'm doing is sharing my personal journey of outdoor footwear and you can decide what works for you or not. I should mention that I've been training in minimalist running shoes for about a year and a half prior to this run. A great book that was a great inspiration to me was called Born to Run by Christopher McDougall, which I highly recommend if you're interested in this. So why minimalist shoes? Well, watch my previous video for more detail, but an overly simplified summary is that we have evolved to run in bare feet or you know, very minimalist shoes. And if you try running a barefoot on any surface, you will notice that you will naturally want to run on the balls of your feet, which changes the mechanics of your running, puts less strain on your joints and conditions and strengthens all the small muscles and tendons that help support them. Now, modern running and hiking shoes often provide lots of padding, ankle support, and often a raised heel that protect from short-term injuries and make it easy to heel strike, which is a lazier way to run. And this is how I ran in my late teens and early 20s and through long distance running with modern running shoes and backpacking expeditions wearing heavy hiking boots, I started developing injuries in my knees and hips. So these last few years, I've been exploring more minimalist shoes in an effort to combat these injuries. And I believe I have noticed a benefit. Now that's not to say modern outdoor shoes don't have their place because they do but I'll discuss what I've been learning and experimenting with later on in the video. So what was it like running in these skin shoes? Well, it was quite pleasant on the natural surfaces, but as you can imagine, not so fun on the compacted pebbles and hard surfaces. All in all, an interesting experience. So this event had people running all over the world for this charity. I'll put a link below where you can learn more about Survival International and a way to donate to them if you'd like to. But now, Onto the footwear discussion. So over a month has passed since I did that run. And since then I actually did a four day expedition wearing those same deerskin shoes, uh, which I'll release a video at the end of the month. I don't want to give too much away, but basically those deerskin shoes did eventually wear down. Uh, these were the spare pair that I took with me um, and had to wear for the final couple of days. But uh, I did learn a lot. I learned more about footwear on that expedition but uh, you'll have to wait till the end of the month to see that video. So in front of me are basically all the outdoor shoes that I've been using and that have featured in the channel over the past few years, from the 400 mile expedition walking across Scotland to winter expeditions, to martial arts, and to historical survival trips. So first of all, I wanna be transparent that none of the brands that I mentioned in this video are directly sponsoring this. Um, some have sent me free stuff to try out uh, and the company Freet I've been working with for the past couple of years and they've set up a discount code that you can use. So if you use it, obviously you get a discount on the footwear and a small percentage of each sale comes back and helps the channel. But I want to be completely honest with all of these and obviously no one shoe ticks all the boxes. So what do I mean when I say shoe from a survival perspective? Well, for me, there are four main things that I want from any outdoor shoe that I'll discuss for all of these. The first thing is prevention of injury. And what I mean by that is any injury from a thorn in your shoe to a twisted ankle to you know, repetitive strain injuries in your knees and the hips to a bad blister. And here there's a balance between short-term protection to long-term conditioning and prevention of injuries. Secondly, I'm thinking about efficiency of movement. I want to move fast and easy. I don't want to be weighed down, but I also don't want to be slipping everywhere. 
And this depends on the environment and what you want to achieve, whether you're hiking up a steep grassy slope or whether you're stalking an animal in the forest. Thirdly, you want to keep your feet dry. And again, there's a balance between being completely waterproof and being able to dry quickly. Fourth and lastly, I'm thinking about long-term use. And that can be anything from the longevity of the actual shoe to what is easy to repair and maintain to what can easily be made from the resources in the wild. So with those four things in mind, let's quickly run through the different categories of footwear I've been trying out. So first of all, what you would think is your classic outdoor shoe, the sort of heavy duty, rigid soled, supportive, waterproof leather boot. So in terms of prevention of injury, so they're giving you plenty of protection from the immediate environment, protection from being crushed, from being scraped, uh, giving you lots of support, which is especially good if you're carrying a heavy weight. However, the downsides, my own experience, um, a solid boot like this, you're much more likely you're gonna get blisters because you know, your foot is rubbing up against a solid thing. I get you know, way more the knee and hip pains wearing these heavy boots, um, especially on you know, long-term walking. They just, uh, you know, they cramp up your feet and they don't allow your, your feet to sort of move naturally in that natural kind of shock absorption of walking in the more minimalist shoes. So in terms of long-term injury, I get way more hip pains and blisters from these heavy duty shoes. In terms of efficiency of movement, if you're in a really hostile environment from, you know, the rubble of a ruined city to a, a steep grassy slope to winter conditions, then the thicker, heavier boots are probably gonna be your best bet, but everything else, they're just too heavy and you, you know, they're not fun to run in or to sneak about in. They're just, yeah, too heavy, too cumbersome. Waterproofness, yeah, sure, they're completely waterproof, but when they get wet, they're almost impossible to dry when you're out in the field. So then your feet are just constantly wet and they're not allowed to dry, which means you're more likely gonna get, you know, trench foot, blisters and other problems. And longevity, yes, sure, the more solid it is, the more solid sole it is, it's gonna last longer than these more minimalist shoes, but the more complex something is, the harder it is to maintain and replicate with the resources that you might find around you. So the downsides of those heavier boots made me transition and want to try these more minimalist lightweight boots um, that I've been trying out for the past couple of years. We've got the Freak Moody's and the Richmond's. Um, now, in terms of prevention of injury, they're you know, giving you enough protection on the soles to, to prevent you know, the worst of sharp stones or anything that might puncture your foot. They're giving you some support, but still enough freedom of movement so that you can use all of those muscles and tendons in your feet uh, to prevent you know, long-term injuries, repetitive strain injuries. And because these shoes are so soft, I've never had a blister. From, from any of these because you know there isn't enough rigidity in the shoe itself for your foot to rub up against. Efficiency of movement, then you know I can run in these. Uh, they're way lighter. They're much more enjoyable to, to move in. Now, obviously in more hostile environments, and really, really steep slopes, then maybe you'll be wanting to go more heavy duty in terms of keeping your feet dry. Now these Moody's are pretty waterproof, but the main advantage is that even if they do get wet, they dry much faster than these more heavy duty shoes. And in terms of long-term use and longevity, these do have a downside because they are so soft, they're meant to allow the natural movement of your foot. There's a lot of pressure on, on the glues of the sole and things. And um, because the soles are just not as thick, then they won't last as long as these more heavy duty shoes. So let's look at the very minimalist, very lightweight side of the spectrum. And when we get to this point, we really are obviously stepping away from the short-term uh, protection benefits of those heavy duty boots. And we're going into more of the long-term conditioning and prevention of injuries. Here's a couple of minimalist running shoes I've been trying out. These are the Connect 2s, which honestly, one of the comfiest pair of shoes I've ever worn. Uh, you can see how well worn I've used them. I've had these for a couple of years. And these are the Tangas. These are actually, the fabric is made from recycled coffee grounds, which is quite interesting. Again, these shoes are just giving you the bare minimum of what you might want from a sole, but still trying to strip away everything else so you're getting as close to feeling like being barefoot as you can. Now going even more minimalist, but still being modern, these were sent to me by a company called Skinner. I think they're called Skinner Shoe Socks. And basically they're like a sock that's been dipped 
into some sort of polymer. And you know, I've been trying these out quite a lot. I've also did that same 10 kilometer run in these and I've been really enjoying them actually. So this sort of polymer on the outside protects you again from the worst of the thorns and the worst of the pointy stones and the, the scuffs and scrapes. The pros of these and these more minimalist ones, obviously they dry super fast. There's hardly any material to soak up water. Nothing for your feet to rub up against. Very unlikely that you're gonna get blisters from any of these. Now efficiency of movement, these and you know these lighter footwear are my favorite things for sort of martial arts, for running around the forest, playing. It just feels like you're in bare feet, but it keeps your feet clean and protected from the worst of the cuts and scrapes. These and these more minimalist footwear, again, I've got the downsides of longevity. They're, they're so thin, they will wear through faster than these. So in terms of keeping your feet dry, especially when it comes to these very lightweight shoes, I've been experimenting with waterproof socks. Um, so a few different brands, we've got Seal Skin and also a brand called Randy Sun sent me these really long socks. So the idea, they're, they're made with this sort of almost it feels similar to neoprene you get lots of different materials but the idea is that they're waterproof so that you can wear you know these more dry fast shoes but still try to keep your feet dry now i've had mixed experiences with them they do sort of work i, I don't like the word waterproof it makes it seem like you keep your feet completely dry which they don't you know breathability all these things it's it's never as simple so i still need to experiment with this a little bit more and finally the simple skin shoes you know there's obviously many different styles of moccasins or you know simple skin shoes out there and um, the video i've got on making these is probably the simplest design i found and you know they do the job they prevent you from the worst of the thorns again worst of the cuts the scrapes that you're going to get walking through the woods but you know all they are is basically a leather sock because they're not gonna, they're not going to give you much protection other than that but dry super super quickly and although themselves they don't last very long if you have a way of getting animal skins which our ancestors did through hunting or farming then you know you can just keep on making them so in terms of longevity in a way they sort of win points in that field as well so in summary what's the best survival shoe well if you're talking about you know being out in the wild long-term survival self-reliance situation you gotta learn from your ancestors, you gotta keep it simple. As long as you can keep finding the resources to make more, they're gonna do the job. But of course, you know, give you very little protection. They're not very good on modern surfaces. So if you could only pick one shoe that covers, you know, lots of different environments, especially hostile environments that's gonna last you a long time, then yeah, sure, maybe I'll be going for something more heavy duty, just a simple, rugged, leather boot. Where I find myself most of the time is here in these minimalist boots. They really do everything that I want most of the time from teaching survival courses to you know lowland walks, running around the woods. These are the things that I keep going back to. Now you could discuss different footwear from a survival perspective for hours but from my personal experience from trying out all these different types of footwear within the environment of Scotland, whenever the situation and weather allows I try and go as minimalist as I can to get all the benefits of efficiency and speed of movement, conditioning your body and preventing those long-term repetitive strain injuries. But when the situation is too hostile, you're talking winter, climbing up steep grassy slopes, rugged terrain, carrying heavy weight, then I'll fall back to the good old standard heavy duty leather boot. And hopefully doing that, I can get the benefits of everything. So I hope you found this video useful folks. I mean, you could discuss this sort of stuff for hours. Again, I'll put a link to that donate page for Survival International, really amazing charity. There's also that discount code if you're interested in these minimalist footwear. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to all my patrons, all supporters, all that stuff. I love you all. And uh, I'll be back with another video at the end of the month. Cheers.